Okay, so I asked you earlier, how did you even hear about the auditions? Because it ain't like, you know. Chilling, I mean, smoking, talking shit. One of my old heads by the name of Trizzy Mac, he said, you know, they having the auditions down at, uh, for the making the banjo. I never knew what it was. But by the by, by that time, I had signed a production deal. Fresh Out of Jail, which was with, was with uh, Black Key. Black Key was a guy that, you know, was from my neighborhood and you know, doing the music thing just like I was. He was a little older than me. So uh, by that time, right before I had got locked up, Black Key had landed two big singles on DMX, the um, Great Depression album, The Who We Be and We Right Here was the lead two singles. And that yep. drove the album to go platinum. So by the time I got out, Black Key had some stain. He had had placements on Beans. He had placements on Jadakiss. He had placements on 50 Cent. He had placements on Ludacris. So by the time I got out, the right thing to do was just sign to his production deal because he already had like some did some groundwork in the business, going around selling his beats. So um, his his lawyer at the time was Ed Woods. So I ended up signing to Black Keys Production under Ed Woods. And that's mm. how they was shopping my, my demo around. And I actually got a chance to, uh, I mean, uh, bust it up with X and chop it up with X. Because when he had his um, bloodline imprint, he was looking for artists then. That's how I met Hitmaker which we know is now Hitmaker, but back then he was called Young Bird. So DMX was contemplating on signing me, but, you know, he was dragging his feet because he was going through legal troubles and certain personal shit he was going through. So, you know, but he always liked me. He always thought I had the words, the pen, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? A lot of people. I was with Miss J, the B Club, with the Timberland thing. So I was doing what I was supposed to do. It just wasn't nobody fully opening their doors and unleashing, I mean, opening up their, you know, they they stable to me, and th yeah, the competition yeah. came like a Willy Wonka chocolate factory golden ticket. And ironically, that was the way that I got to one of the big, yeah, you know I mean, playmakers in hip hop. But I already was moonlighting with DMX, Bloodline, already moonlighting with Timberland for his B Club. So I was always doing a rap thing, dropping the mixtapes, opening up for acts when they came to Philly. So I wasn't just like the other members. Like me and Babs had dropped projects. We was really like 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 instrument in trying to make it out of career. A couple of other members, I wouldn't say they didn't want it, but they hadn't been doing the grind, the late work that we had been doing up until the audition for making a band. Let me ask you something. What was that audition like for y'all? Like, how many people would you say showed up? Was it one round of auditions, two rounds, three rounds? Walk us through that. Yeah. Funny story about that. I auditioned the first time in Philly at the five spot. It's like, um, I would say like, um, I would say it's like the high end part of Philly. But make a long story short, it was a lot. It was a big turnout. Everybody had their rap costumes on, their jewelry, their makeup. And that's the first time I got to see how bad people wanted to, to, to have a career in the music business. So I actually, you know what I mean, auditioned the first time, only got 30 seconds. And then, you know, they told me to, all right, next. And then, you know, that was it. But if you watch the, the, the first season of the show, he did the initial um, talent search one time. And then he picked Chopper, Babs, and a couple of others. And then he didn't feel like he had enough to continue. Then he did the whole scout search again and then went around to the cities again. But by that time, I had befriended um, my man, Jay Black. He was the one that was working at the radio station, the parent company that was holding the competition in my city with Bad Boy and MTV, which was 103.9. Jay Black was the program director. When he found out that making the band auditions was coming back to Philly, he gave me a call and said, just come back down and audition again. Don't get discouraged. We're going to do it again. Just come down and give it your all. And the second time is when Harv was there, Jay Black was there, and the MTV exec was there. And that was the second time, was the second time I actually made the callback list to audition in front of Puff at 42nd Street in New York. So I had to audition twice. Okay, so Puff at that time, he was bigger than life. When, when you got to stand before this man, was you shook? Was you excited? Did you feel like, yo, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life? I fell into a bunch of equipment. They had equipment <laughs> set up on the stage. I fell into a bunch of equipment. Um, what happened was when I got the call back to uh, audition for Puff in New York, I was in Renton, which is almost like two and a half hours out the way. So we got the call at 11 o'clock that I was supposed to be there at 12. 
I didn't leave rent until like two o'clock. Just bullshitting. But then my cousin finally talked some sense to me like, yo, go. This might be your chance to really make it. This might be your chance. I'm like, <coughs> they're not looking for me. I'm not marketable. You know what I mean? Blase, blase, just giving all excuses. So actually, we left two hours after I was supposed to be in New York for the audition. So by by that happened, and we got there extra late. So I just told my cousin, let me out the car and go park. I walked past the whole line, which was wrapped around the corner on 42nd Street. I just went to the front door, knocked on a glass door, and then the staff member came out with the little clipboard. I told him my name, and they said, oh, you next, and pulled me straight from the street to end line about the audition for Puff again. I didn't even wait in the long line. I just went straight Philly style, went straight to the door. Fuck that line. Yo, I'm the call back from Philly. My name, Lloyd Mathis. What's up? They like, what's your name? Lloyd. Oh, you next. And then pulled me straight in there. So when, when, once I get the audition for Puff, he told me to um, say my name and where I'm from. I said, Enes from Philly. Then, you know, the beat came on. I think it was the victory beat. And then before you know it, I misplaced my foot and it fell into a bunch of equipment. A keyboard, a drum set, a mic stand, a guitar. Like, totally bust my ass in front of the whole making the band puff. Miss Combs was there. His mom was there. Craig Mack was there. Rest in peace. Like, the whole bad B5 was there. The whole entire Bad Boy MTV staff. I was so embarrassed. But that kind of fueled me. It angered me in a way where I didn't give a fuck. And that attitude, not giving a fuck, is what kind of like fuel my energy to have a good audition. And then, you know, the rest is history. After I did that, he asked me, was I okay? I got up, dust myself off. I spit my rhyme and I made, I, I was on a list to, to make the boot camp. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.